All right, Suzanne, so next up, I think we have Chris. Yes, we have uh, Chris uh, coming up. And, uh, well, Chris, I, I don't know if he needs an introduction. He's a long-time MVP uh, all over the Belgium uh, community. Um, he is also organizer uh, of the CloudBlue conference. So how is that uh, um, coming along, uh, Chris? Uh, well, as I wanted to uh, state in my uh, presentation, intro slide about myself. Uh, well, this year due to Cloud Brew, uh, due to the pandemic, we couldn't organize Cloud Brew, unfortunately, because we're really looking forward to that, seeing all the people having a drink, have good sessions, uh, great food, what we're also known for. Uh, so we had for a year. So hopefully 2021, end of year, somewhere in December, we might do another Cloud Brew. Oh, well, let's hope so, because, uh, well, I, I think everybody uh, who's uh, watching as well, uh, we can uh, really use some, uh, some oh. great community and, uh, and uh, enjoy some, uh, some uh, brewed uh, beverages as well. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're so looking forward to that, and, uh, seeing people again face to face, having a drink, sharing a laugh. Uh, yeah. Great. So you're going to do a session about uh, Blazor. Um, really looking forward to, to it. So uh, uh, please uh, take it away, Chris. Okay. Let me start here by sharing my screen. When you can see my screen, please shout out. Okay, super, I see something upcoming. So good afternoon for all those people uh, around the globe uh, following this session of visual uh, of virtual Azure uh, Community Day, 3rd of December uh, right now. So welcome in this session about serverless web applications with Blazor. So first, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Chris Andermast, I'm based in Belgium. So for me, it's like one, let's say 56 at the moment. I'm a Microsoft Most Sellable Professional uh, since 2007. Uh, first for ASP.NET and around 2016, um, I became an Azure MVP. I'm also part of the ASP Insiders Group. I also run, uh, together with some other great people, uh, the Belgian Azure User Group, ASG. And as we just introduced, uh, Cloud Brew, unfortunately not this year. Uh, we were also thinking about doing it virtual, but given the fact that so many conferences are nowadays virtual, and we really want to share the beer, hence the cloud brew part. Uh, we also want to share the basically the beer, especially the base, uh, the very tasty Belgian beers. So we decided to move it to December next year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get the cloud brew next year. So with the pandemic, um, most of Belgian shops and. Um, for those people who are familiar with Belgium, we have a lot of small shops like family shops and such in Belgium who are not really on the internet yet, who didn't have a web shop or whatever. So I decided to make this uh, presentation about a local web shop where I personally like to go. It's called the Broadbroeders, which is like three kilometers away from where I live. And you see all those smiley um, uh, faces over there. Those are the people who actually work um, uh, over there. Two of them are the founders. They start around like 10 years ago. And as you can see, they, they've grown uh, with quite some people. And it's still a very nice traditional uh, artisanal shop. And they make very tasty bread, like you can see here, all based on sourdough. These are also very yummy. And yeah, my wife's favorite actually is some croissant. So really very nice and tasty. Um, I sat down with those people. I asked them, uh, by the way, permission to make use of all their images. So we're covered on that part. Uh, for them, the requirements is like, it should be easy to use and the report should be in Excel. Okay. So I came up with the idea like, look, uh, let's try to make some ingredients and make use of Blazor, some Azure functions, logic apps, and because of the Excel, uh, OneDrive and Excel online. So traditionally, some person, and sorry about my drawing skills, I'm not as great as my father used to be. Uh, so this is a person who wants to buy something through a browser, 
on the internet. And traditionally, you would put it on a server, connect with that, have some program running over there, and hopefully you get your bread. Of course, here you can uh, print it out to either Excel or traditionally you would also put it into a database. Now, this service traditionally puts on-prem. So basically in their local shop, uh, somewhere here in my city, three kilometers away from me, um, I remember. But what if they want to scale out? Say, for example, they get like way more places and so much demand because everyone is ordering online nowadays. So they would have to scale out. Of course, they have a very tiny shop, so not that much place for such machines. Let's try to think like traditionally lift and shift to Azure, of course. All of a sudden, Azure, we would replace this like the local database running on a small server or a local machine. Uh, it would become like SQL Azure. And all the servers would most likely be lift and shift to Azure App Services. Pretty good, but we still pay an amount per server, per uh, Azure App Service. And perhaps you don't need it because A, they're closed on Sundays. Uh, perhaps people don't want to uh, order back then or during the night. Perhaps also people don't order because I think there's like a cap at the moment for, let's say, uh, after four o'clock, you're not allowed to, uh, to order anymore for the day after, such kind of things. So perhaps you don't constantly need all that power and payment at the end of the month. So I was thinking like serverless. But let's go for this one, this small solution. So this is going to be a rather low cost, but one that's still, still uh, scale out if you want to. So our person is going to still use a browser. It's going to download uh, a Blazor app, uh, WebAssembly app, which basically is uh, something cool and uh, new uh, running in, uh, in the browser. It's going to connect to Azure, uh, Azure Functions, which on its own is, well, I didn't want to write most of the logic myself or uh, buy another component to write something to an Excel. So I had the, the, the feeling like, okay, we can put this uh, through Excel online on a OneDrive, which they can access. And there's also something like in the serverless space called Logic Gaps, which has great connectors to connect either to uh, SAP or whatever you want, but also to Excel online to add extra rows into it. And with that, most of our uh, slides are already gone. And let's try to go to demo time. And this is, of course, already going to be like one of the end results, basically our Excel file, which is running on a OneDrive. And as you can see, I tried again eight minutes ago to make sure everything is still working. Um, and this is basically what we want to have. Like at a certain date, something has been ordered, how many, how much the total amount, by whom, and of course, this is a fake uh, mobile phone number, so please don't dial that one. I just made it up. Okay, so let's get started. First, with the Blazor uh, application. I'm first going to try to run everything uh, on-prem on my local machine, and once that's done, I already have it prefetched in Azure because making a storage account and Azure functions, it might take a while before it uh, gets in, and we're very limited on time. So uh, I'll show the end result uh, when we get there. Now, let's start with Blazor app. And that can we do from the uh, command line. We can also make use of Visual Studio, but I'm going to make use of Visual Studio code uh, because people also um, like to make use of other uh, alternative operating systems besides Windows. So let's try that one. So .NET new, let's see if I can still type. Blazor wasm, and the output is going to be the problem because basically it's for them that we're creating something. Okay. Now, see. And if I do here, like, look, this has already been completely uh, created by that, uh, using that template. And if I now go into code, I get to see this one. So what has been created over here? It's like a program.cs. And let's restore everything in the meantime. Okay, super. So this is how to start it up. 
Uh, yes, I would like to have them now. What basically now just happened for those people who are not used to uh, Visual Studio Code is that I created here by accepting that one, some extra tasks and a launch. So whenever I now press F5 or start debugging, Visual Studio Code knows where to go to, set up my URLs, etc. Love it. Now in Blazor, we have an app.razor and Basically, as it needs to be running in the browser, it always needs like a, uh, a place to go to, like an HTML page. And this index.html is going to be the root I'm going to go to. So here it tries to uh, load in several CSS styles. And this is one of the most important parts that blazor.webassembly.js. So yes, it's still a bridge between JavaScript trying to load in uh, the Blazor components, which is basically .NET compiled, running inside the browser. And if you're worried about like, yeah, but this is perhaps too new, it will not run on my machine. Well, most of the browsers nowadays, also uh, the uh, on mobile apps, will run uh, Blazor. Basically, this is nothing more than WebAssembly, which is in, uh, standard, so you can use it in C Sharp, my preferred uh, language, but you can also run it in other languages, like say, for example, Java or whatever. We're on the Microsoft stack, so we're going to make use of Blazor. Now, here you also see some pages and people who are used to making use of uh, ASP.NET MVC, they should know this uh, uh, syntax, uh, this extension, sorry. Uh, so here we have an index page, just in hello world, a counter, which we're just going to run soon and a fetch data. So let's try this one and just make use of terminal here. Let's open that one. Great. So I'm just going to do .NET run. It's going to build because basically it needs to be built. It's an assembly, remember? Great. I'm sorry about my voice. I noticed yesterday that uh, my voice is a bit deteriorating. It must be something in the air, I guess. I don't think it's going to be COVID, but just uh, just a regular cold or something. So I'll try to hold on. So basically, this is my index.razor page rendered. This is that counter, so I can click here and I can fetch data. So this comes standard out of the box. Very easy, quickly up and running. As you can see, there's some styling over here. Um, now, about this, I will see where it will come from. I can close this one. We are going to see like uh, there's some funky, weird things here. And that's also being added by Blazor. So uh, also the CSS is going to be transpiled by Blazor. So if you can see instead of like just our page, it tries to make an extra selection over here. This is quite specific to Blazor. Um, I'm not going to go too deep in it because this is virtual Azure community day. So uh, but if you want to look more deeper into that, just uh, be sure to study it a little bit. It's quite easy, actually. OK, now let's go back to our code. And I can show this one. OK, so we want to make like a, a small web shop. And we're going to create here a new page. And we're going to call that shop. Laser. Be mindful. Uh, Behind the scenes is going to be compiled to a class. So following the, uh, the conventions, this should start with a uh, capital letter. Otherwise, it will not compile and complain. This is our shop. And I'm going to be very lazy now. I'm, go I'm just going to copy paste this one over. But we're going to soon uh, change the small parts. So this I'm going to call shop. And let's see here. Shop, yeah, I don't need this one. And OK, so this should still work. Now, I come from the ASP.NET web forums like way back down in 2002 uh, timeline. And I'm not really much fan of uh, 
putting codes together with my razor file. So I'm going to close this one over here. And also this one I'm going to take out. And I'm going to create a new file called shop.cs. I'm going to need a namespace into this. And this is going to be worldbrothers.pages. And this I'm going to write a public partial class called shop. I want to inherit from component base. Okay. Now let's some uh, add some code from my code snippet if I can get reach to it. Okay, so what do I have here? Okay, I need to add some uh, class. And first I'm going to use here these ones. Okay, super. I'm having problems with uh, switching my screens apparently. So, And let's add him some code. Oh. Seems my mouse is not working correctly. I had some problems with this computer today. Wait. Okay, let's add that one. And sorry about that. And some products. Okay. So these are some site classes that I will be needing. And let's see if now things will work. Okay, I got here, got my icon lookup. So basically this is going to be uh, generics inside the browser. So you might as well do that. Because we're going to have a web shop, we're also going to need a couple of images. And let me copy paste those in underneath the, the, the root. Uh, it follows the workspace or just, okay, let's copy these over. So here I have some JSON class and here I have some images. Uh, let's say for example here, some of our bread or whatever we're going to make use of. This is a simple part, okay. And apparently here, this one is not very much liked. So let's make this and products comes from this protected uh, variable over here. And there's another one here. That's of course, because I copy pasted it. So let's say again here. And now it's a part of my code here. and replace this one. Great. So if all now goes okay, I should be able to, to run this. I can also here 
add something over here to my uh, to my product. So whenever I uh, click one of my button, uh, that button in the row, it will update that. Now let's try to run this again. Um, I'm going to put down this one because now, in, uh, since recently .NET 5 came out, and the nice thing about this is that I can now watch something being uh, done. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, super. Now let's see if I can just do this. As you can see, I'm not a designer, so. Okay. And let's add this side and let's add this one to that side so that we can see if something is going to happen over here. Great. I would like to show because I was calculating the quantity. As you can see, I have lovely intelligence over here. And now because I changed something over here, it got automatically saved. You can see here directly in the browser, you get an update. So let's see if I can update this again. Let's add that one. Great. So 34 plus, basically we made a calculator at the moment. Cool. I like the layout, but it still says here like date, date, date. Let's try to uh, to make it a bit more uh, sporty looking. Okay. And let's see, In this one over here, let's go to this one. And instead of just showing this, I'm going to show this one. Again, and let's see if everything works. Okay. And let's see if this still works. And then I click add over here. Okay, super. So basically what was uh, done over here is I made a looked up product, which is going to be of type, I look up uh, day of week, hence what you see over here, the Tuesday or the Wednesday, and again, the same product. So here I made use in the browser. I don't stress it enough. Uh, I made use of Sterix and then Link, so pretty cool. No more heavy JavaScript duty or whatever anymore. Just uh, beautiful code in uh, C sharp. If you like that, I like it too. So now we also have like a uh, a function because I told you guys uh, we're going to make use of Azure Functions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new function. And as I already shown you before. I have here several already. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to create here a new project. And now let's go to, I think I put the other one in, in here. And which is. And I'm going to make use of a C sharp one. I'm going to make use of a HTTP trigger. And I'm going to call this one current data. And this is okay for the moment. It's going to be anonymous. And I opened it in the current browser. Okay. So this is some template code created by the uh, by the generator. And we're going to take uh, basically most of this out. 
restore. Okay. That's nice. First and foremost, before I continue, I would like to try and test this one out uh, locally. So what I can do is in my local settings over here, I can add here cross origin. So by this wildcard, it means like I can call it from any other website uh, locally because my Blazor app, uh, application is running on local host port 5000 or 5001 for HTTPS. And my uh, function is going to uh, run on this local HTTP port. Let's quickly see if I got this correct. Okay, super. Um, this one can go. This one can also go. I just want to leave the log information. And let's quickly see over here. Okay. So basically, there's nothing going to do but the current date time of the server. Okay. Let's see if I can start this with debugging because I would like to put a breakpoint over here. So if all went well, I can go and call this one. And it should show the date and time. If I go to my breakpoint, of course, let's take that breakpoint away for future reference. But as you can see, you can easily locally debug an Azure function. Okay, so let's try that again. You see here some processing and logging. Thanks to this one over here. Okay, let's stop this one. I'm also going to add future reference, this one, which is going to be like another function, which is called purchase. It's only going to be post. So this one is get. So basically I could take out this one for the moment. And let's copy in some other classes for this one. Okay, super. And I'm going to copy paste these already here. Okay, great. So everything should work here. I've got here some errors, so a generic collection. Okay, super, should work. Now in my Blazor uh, application, we'd like to get the date and time of our uh, of our service. So in our initialize task, we're also going to put a, uh, a call to our service. And we're going to call that like this. And of course, we need here a uh, date time called current date. Here. Sorry, 
I'm going to call this a string just to make sure. Okay, so this should correspond to this and call this one. So let's see here. I'm going to put here a breakpoint. I'm already going to run this because as you saw, this takes a little bit. Okay, that's not so nice. Let's see here. Ah, okay, this one. This should supposedly run. Let's try that again. Oh, that's because I'm making use of system.txt.json. And apparently, the template comes with uh, the former version of newtonsoft.json. So there was a namespace collision over there. OK, so while this is running, takes a while. As you can see, also our next, uh, our other uh, function over here got here. So 771. OK, that looks exactly the same thing. So now if I run this one, and over here. Uh, let's see over here. This should hold the uh, result, basically the current date time of the server, thanks to an Azure function. Okay. So let's start this one. Net run. So here I got into my breakpoint coming from our Blazor application. And if all goes well, I got here the exact same time. And let's try it again just to make sure. As you can see here, our uh, function gets hit. OK, cool. I can close these two. Let me see how am I doing on time. Um, for the people in the Netherlands, uh, I still have enough time to go on. No response, so I guess we're good. Okay. And I'm going to let this run over here. I'm um, sorry. This one that I need to be in. As you saw, it's always a bit annoying to, uh, for me to keep on typing like uh, in the browser that uh, shops. So let's fix that one. And let's go here to shared. This is our main layout. And I need to be in our nav menu. So I'm just going to copy paste this one. I don't have to type everything myself. We called it our shop. And let's. Now, this name corresponds to this name. So now, whenever I uh, go, see, I didn't call. I didn't build, of course, because I didn't uh, use uh, .NET run. Let's see here. So as you can see, you have to recompile whenever you do something. Because behind the scenes, this is all being translated to C-sharp files, being as, uh, compiled into an assembly, and run off there. So now let's see over here. 
So here's my shop and everything is still good. Okay, great. I don't need this, it will go away. Now my uh, file over here, whenever I uh, do something, of course, I also want to send in a purchase. And let's grab it over here. And let's quickly add some test code just to see if that works. Okay, list order. I need to put in a, again, the generics. Okay. My service over here is still running, supposedly. And let's add over here a breakpoint. Make sure here, okay, now. The command to use at the moment. So let's start this one. Okay. Now let's say we're going to buy nine of these and five of these. Let's go here and debug. And as you can see, I got two orders because I made up some sample code. And now we're going to send it to our uh, logic app servers. So here I'm going to flatten down things. Now it's serve everything over here. Now. This morning, when I was rehearsing again, uh, this application, and that's why I'm a bit nervous at the moment, is because it didn't work anymore. For some reason, uh, with the latest new version of this that I tried, uh, my call to my uh, logic app uh, made things go awry. So basically, uh, it didn't work out for me anymore. But luckily, I have a backup solution um, to make it run. So if I now can go into this one, so basically now this would just call my logic app on Azure. I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to try to get rid of this one. Okay, and that doesn't want to seem to go, okay, it wants to go away, super. So what I can do here is make a new file and copy over these And we're going to mimic just like I would call a post to my service. So basically, this is my workflow. Uh, we're going to show that soon, what's going to happen. So here I'm going to say Susie and let's say uh, Hank is also in the call. And Hank likes to eat a lot of croissants over there. So, and thanks to the REST client, I'm going to now call this one. So as you can see, it's pretty fast. It only took like 300 milliseconds to call and get a response back. So basically, uh, what I did now over here is just mimic what I would normally do here in code. And as I told you since this morning, uh, when I uh, looked into it anymore, uh, this is exactly the same service, but unfortunately, somehow the, the JSON didn't get accepted anymore. So I don't know if it's like due to a new version since recently that I uh, tried it, or uh, something else, so I have to figure it out uh, later on. Uh, I might put a blog post about it later on as well. But luckily, I can still make it work like this. If you're curious of what I'm using here, this is basically just like an extension, and I have quite many extensions, as you can see, uh, over here. So also for Azure Functions, Storage, Azure, for C Sharp, uh, nice looking team what I'm using right now. And the one 
that I'm looking here for now is called a REST client. That's this one. So thanks to REST client, you can do things like what I just did over here. So there's a nice explanation if you want to get used to it. I also like to use it uh, instead of Postman. Uh, if I don't want to open Postman and I'm already in Visual Studio Code, I can make use of this one. So if you want to try that out by yourself, uh, it works and it works very nicely. Okay, super. So let's see. Uh, look, and already, uh, so you can see I'm not kidding you. Uh, I ordered Hank instead of Suzanne during my uh, other uh, things, my other uh, presentations over here. Uh, so this gets added. So how did I set this one up? I created a new OneDrive. I added a new uh, Excel workbook. And here I gave the date uh, in. And say, so for example, I can do here like 12, 3, uh, 2020. And let's make that Chris. Now, the magic trick is over here to select these and insert a table. So, this is how you make up a table. And that's also that what you need from Logic Apps so that you can connect those two things together. Now, now that I showed you those, so here it's, it uh, comes in. So you saw here just like um, these just got called in. Let's try that one again, just to make sure that I'm not kidding you. And it takes a bit of time. Let's say um, and. Uh, Oma Henk from a very famous TV show in the Netherlands in the past. And um, let's make this 48 croissants. Of course, it also needs to be a bit more expensive. That one again. And hopefully in a couple of seconds, I'll look here. So Oma Henk got here and got 48 croissants. So you see that's still working. Now, how did I create that one? Is just by going to a uh, Logic app. So what I create is a, a new logic app. And whenever HTTP request uh, is received, we're going to do this. So basically, that's an address. Uh, yes, I got that. Thank you very much. So I created here a uh, whenever a new logic app in the designer online. Um, and this is being generated by me if I put in like a sample, uh, sample code. So basically what I did is just that same JSON uh, collection that I just showed you to put in the, uh, the post uh, command. I entered that over here. It made up a small scheme over here. The next step is because yeah, it just received something, but what should we do with it? Um, so I took here the body and as you can see here, I have many other things that I can make use of, of what it gets in. And here we're going to uh, parse that one. And then the next step, because this is a collection, I won't have like row per row, item per item that I get in through my JSON collection. Uh, I want to write it down in that Excel online file. So here in the for each, I make use of the body uh, from that former step, which came in here. What I also find handy is that this color corresponds to this color. So this is a for each control. And here I have my uh, Excel file. So here I can connect that one. I can go to Brawl Brothers, for example. And here I can select my uh, Excel online file. And, oops, sorry. And here I can select then uh, the table. So because it's Excel online, I didn't open it in an uh, Excel on desktop. It just gives me the table one. Uh, otherwise, I could uh, change it uh, over here. And this is basically like yeah, all the things from the JSON that got parsed from the former step that's being shown here as a uh, as another step. Uh, sorry, as a uh, variable that I can make use of here. So here I'm going to correspond uh, in my JSON file. Uh, sorry, the JSON uh, request that I sent and parsed. I can make here use of uh, date, type, quantity, and such. And then thanks to this one, uh, add a row into a table 
which is something from uh, uh, Logic Apps itself, I can have that uh, part inserted into my Excel file, like you just saw here. Now, so far we have been using uh, everything here offline on, uh, on my PC. So even I want to create, say for example, uh, this can go away. Even I want to make uh, and upload that, it's going to take some time. So I already did that before, uh, before, but for the function app, I can just say here like deploy to a function app uh, series. I select my description, for example, and I can create a new one. And testing this one out, just to be globally unique. This, not yet .NET, uh, .NET 5.0, and here in West Europe, and here it would uh, send this one out. And for the shop, it's something similar. We're going to uh, put it online on a uh, on a storage account. So what we need to do here now, the following step is, we're going to publish our local assembly .NET publish. So here's going to create a DLL file, and it's going to be here under the mother publish whenever it's done over here. So it's doing some tree shaking over here, compressing, so it's not too big. Should show up here soon. In the meantime, I can already go here to storage, create a new storage account. Um, okay, that's unique enough. Okay, so this one is ready at the meantime. I think I made a small mistake over here. Either way, this is going to keep on running. So I already did that before you. Look, so now basically what you can do is in this publish file, right click on this dot 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 root. So because basically here you're going to see the index.html file that we've seen before. Basically, this is your starter point. And this is an important one. It has been enabled for static web hosting. Okay. I don't know why it's put here that uh, this one it's trying to make something, but it's not finding anything. So that's good. Um, so what we now can do here, for example, is deploy the static website via Azure Storage. And I'm going to make use of this one over here. And I just made a Azure test, if I recall correctly, Blazor. As you can see, I've been trying test on this account a lot already. And now it should start. Of course, what I didn't do in this sample is basically not change all these URLs. So these URLs are still pointing out to the uh, local version and not to the uh, version which are going to be deployed online. So make sure if you have like a, uh, a DevOps scenario that you put these keys in. I just want to show like, how do you deploy that over there? Just make sure that you get the URL um, from the functions. Uh, let's see, I put it over here. Say for example, you want to go over here. This is a sample that I created before. And here I can see, for example, functions. And here I can copy the function URL, for example. 
let's try. Um, let's put this in comment. I just want to make sure that we're going to get at least the time over here. And we're going to .NET publish that one again. See, it's now a bit faster. And the reason why I do it twice is because I want to show you like, yeah, it will show you another pop-up, meaning like, hey, I want to replace something. So basically replacing means deleting stuff and then later on uploading it again. So this is done. Again, under the publish. And make use of this one again. So now soon it will say, voila, delete and deploy. I feel my voice going down, so I'm going to drink quickly. It's taking a bit longer than I expected. It's OK. Well, as we're going to wait uh, for this a little short, uh, I'm going to round up over here. So let's go back to this one. Hopefully you like the demo. Uh, there's now some part for Q&A that I need to keep open. And of course, if you want to reach out, uh, you can connect to me on uh, Twitter or send me some email. And Let's see over here if this one is slower going to upload. It's taking a bit longer than usual, which should be OK. So Hank, back to you. Are there some questions so far? So thanks. We're still looking for Hank over here, but you'll have to do with <laughs> me. Um, so one of the questions I have is, is Blazor or maybe WebAssembly in general going to be taking over from JavaScript altogether? <laughs> uh, well, I get that question from my brother-in-law, who is a uh, renowned JavaScript uh, author. Uh, he's uh, writing a lot of articles about mostly nowadays Vue.js and, and Angular. Um, he's going to replace, I think there's going to be place for both of them. Uh, there's still so many people out there who have been writing JavaScript, uh, also in combination with, for example, Node.js or whatever. Uh, so JavaScript is still going to be there um, for quite some foreseeable time. For me personally, Blazor is interesting because even though I wrote a lot of JavaScript uh, during the last years, uh, I've been making use since I think 1997 I was on the web. So I was trying to fiddle out uh, JavaScript or whatever it uh, was back then very old browsers. I also played around with Vue.js, with jQuery, a lot of time uh, of uh, production-ready applications. Also with uh, Vue, with Angular, I also feel a bit around with React. Uh, but the last couple of years, I did mostly uh, backend development. And so a lot of C Sharp, so it kind of watered down my JavaScript knowledge. Um, Whenever I take a look, I can still read it, I can still uh, see it, but I'm not really following up on all those big uh, fancy things anymore, like Angular or whatever. Um, so if I want to do some new stuff with that, I would have to learn it again. Um, but with this, with Blazor, I can write and keep on writing C Sharp code. So for me as a developer, I can be more productive more easily, faster, because I can stay in the language that I know and love. So. From that point of view, for me personally, Blazor is actually like, yeah, the, the next best thing, because otherwise I have to go and study again. I don't mind that, <laughs> but for being productive uh, and quickly. So say, for example, like a half year ago, I was in need of a dashboard application uh, at my customer. And instead of trying to figure out like, yeah, how should I do it? Which framework should I use? I was just like, oh yeah, there's Blazor. Let's try that out. And that's how I got also rolled in into Blazor. 
And for me, it was actually very easy to set uh, something up. So within a day, I had a full dashboard application that's still into production right now. All right, so it stays around, but Blazor is there to, uh, to, uh, to stay as well. Yes, I think there's uh, an ecosystem. I, there's a place for both of them. Um, I think, especially people who are more fond of using their own language, like say Python or uh, Node.js or Java or whatever, they can create something that compiles into WebAssembly because WebAssembly is not uh, proprietary to Microsoft alone. It's just Blazor, which is the, the, the flavor of Microsoft to create WebAssembly applications. So I think WebAssembly on its own might be very interesting. The, the most important thing is also, uh, we don't need a plugin like we used to have for Flash or Silverlight in the past. And I think that's a big advantage. So it's now baked into the browser. It's fully supported by all major browser vendors. And that's why I think it's, it has a future. Cool stuff. Okay, you showed us a whole, a whole lot of stuff uh, in about an hour, I think. And uh, we really wanna thank you for that. And with that, I wanna hand over to Suzanne. Yes, thank you. Okay. And um, yeah, hope to see you uh, again soon and hopefully in person okay. at one point. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a lot of great stuff coming up uh, for the rest of the day. We will have a session about um, Kida. We will uh, talk about security, um, about serverless, hosting your WordPress sites, automating your social life. There's a lot of stuff going on today. So check the schedule below. Also, um, we have a Cloud Skills Challenge and you can win a backpack. Um, the URL is down below here, aka.ms slash VACD challenge. Um, and you, you can win uh, and have some fun. So just, uh, just join the challenge um, and, uh, and join the fun. We're going out for a very, very short break. And after the short break, we are going to um, listen to Elfa, Eleftheria Batsu um, about how to design with your users' needs and expectations in mind. Um, so um, yes, I would like to say see you after the break. Uh, but that's not true because uh, our hosting duty is uh, is uh, unfortunately over. Uh, so uh, we are going to switch around uh, uh, in the break and uh, uh, after uh, you uh, will see the new hosts. Thank you and uh, stay tuned.